Welcome to tonight's video. Uh, here recently, I've been teaching on sound doctrine and sound teaching, sound instruction in the Lord Jesus Christ and in faith, to have to have faith, strong faith in the Lord. Uh, Hebrews 11, 6 says that, 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 that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So the question is, do we want to please God or do we want to please men? Do we want to be men pleasers? Do we want to please God or do we want to please men? Do we want to get in the sound instruction of the word of God or do we want to get into fables? Now, I want to pick up in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and I'm going to start in verse 3. It says, if anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to godly teaching. He is conceited and understands nothing. That's a pretty bold statement there. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness, now, now, now hear this, who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. You know, sadly, there are many teachers who stray away from the faith because they start seeing a money making opportunity in sharing the gospel and sharing the word of God. They start, they start seeing dollar signs. You know, it's one of the reasons why Jesus uh, went into the temple and cracked the whip. Because they were using the temple for other other means and other purposes, uh, except for so that men could come and have a close relationship with the Lord. They were getting into other stuff. They were using they were abusing they were using and abusing the temple, and that still angers God this very day. I guarantee you. Verse six: But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptations and a trap and into many foolish, harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. And this is a scripture we all know here. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith. See, this is key right here. As, and this is what I was touching on just a second ago. You know, they're, 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 they're eagering for money and they start to stray away from the faith. They start to stray away from sharing the sound truth and doctrine of the word of God. They start adding water to the scripture. So, so you know, so it'll be uh, less filling and taste great. That, that sound familiar? Less filling, taste great. You know, or, 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 or we can call it diet Bible. You know, we, we don't, we, we want to, we want to add some water to it. It's a, the message is a little too strong. So let's water it down. So, so people will, will, will feel good and like what they hear and continue to give. And this is something that has, that has tainted a lot of teachings in the body of Christ. We're more concerned about being men pleasers than being God pleasers. Now, let me continue on. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Verse 13, but you, man of God, flee, flee from all this, from all this and pursue righteousness, pursue righteousness, pursue righteousness, righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. And I'll add here, notice they didn't say pursue the signs. You know, I've had one or two people say, well, Marcus is saying that we're not to we're not to pay attention to the signs. Really? Is that the impression you got? And, you know, since November, I've shared I've shared in seven months, I've shared 10 messages Dealing specifically with the end times, 10 messages on the end times. We are not. Now, I'm going to be clear here. 
We are not to be ignorant of the time and the season that we're living in. But what I did say is that we're to put our Lord Jesus Christ at the focus and the center of our walk. We're to walk by faith. We're to put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, not into signs. See, see, there are many out there, many out there right now. I didn't say all. I said many, many out there are running after signs. They live for the signs. They're craving after signs. And then their faith walk is suffering because of that. See, we're to put our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the very first disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me. So we're to follow after Christ. We're to see when we follow after Christ and, and, and put faith in him and faith in his word, then the rest will fall into place. Now, I want to uh, continue on here. Verse 12. It says to fight the good fight of faith. Again, faith, faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. That's how we receive faith It's by standing strong in the word of God, standing strong on the promises of God. Second Corinthians 1 20 says that all the promises of God are yes in him and amen in him. Yes, we are to pay attention. Yes, we are to be aware of this, of the season that we're living in. But without faith, what good is it? You know, this board here that shows all the proof of the of the eclipses and everything, the the the, the dates we've gotten from NASA shows the proof of that. You know, you can there there are family members that are so stubborn, and we all have them. We all have them. I have them, you have them, we all have them. They can look at that board and they can continue to go on. It won't phase them one bit. See, there are there are there are many that will only be turned to the Lord. Because of seeing the light of Christ shining through us. Now, if they're looking at a weak church, at a weak body of believers that have this beam me up, Scotty, get me out of here attitude. Are, are, are we going to touch them? Is, is that us shining our light? No, no, no. We we have to have we, we have to be strong in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will lead us and guide us and give us the words to speak to our loved ones. That we that way we can shine his light through us strongly and brightly. See, he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. He will show us how to share the word of God to open up the eyes to the lost. That's so important. See, if we if we forsake our faith walk, then we can we can scream about the rapture all day long. But it's not going to make a difference. So fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. You know, there's a lot of talk about sounding the alarm. And in my uh, in my next message, uh, me and Esther, we're going to dig into this a little bit about sounding the alarm. But, you know, without faith, if we're sounding the alarm without faith, then we're just making a bunch of noise. You know, uh, 2 Timothy 2.16 says that vain babblings lead to more ungodliness. And there are many out there that are babbling about a lot of stuff going on. They're tying everything that happens in the news to the end times. But yet they're not strong in the truth. They're not strong in the word of God. They're not seeking out the scriptures and they're not seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ. They're looking at the news wire and then tie everything into the end times because there's other motives behind many of these teachings. And again, I said many. I didn't say all, but many. And so Jesus said that it, it, that, that was the very first warning Jesus gave in Matthew 24. He said that it, that take heed, to take heed for many. See, this is the word. See, don't quote Marcus. Quote the word. Read the word for yourself. He said many would come in his name saying that I am Christ being that I am anointed, I'm anointed. I, I have a word from the Lord. I have a word from God. And me and you both know how many times in the last two years alone, how many false prophecies have we heard just in the last two years alone? So let's put our trust in Christ. Let's put our trust in the word because we cannot go wrong when we do that. And I'll leave you with this, with this question. I asked this question in the last video, but I'll ask it again. When, when the Lord returns for us, you know, this is Luke 8, 18. It says, uh, when the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith on the earth? And 
And my question to you is, when the Lord returns, will he find you in faith, standing strong in his word, or will he find you in fables, drooling after and falling after false teachers who love to hype it up, who love to get attention and is more concerned about other things, more concerned about view counts, more concerned about finances flowing in than sharing the meat of the word. Well, that's my message tonight. You know, Esther is going to join me here in this next message that we're working on right now. Uh, we're going to we're going to talk about sounding the alarm and we're going to talk about faith, our faith walk and how that ties into the end times. It's so important that we make sure we keep that connection strong because faith has everything to do with these end days that we're living in. And and our faith walk has everything to do with the signs that we're seeing. OK, the, the Lord is concerned about our faith walk. And if we're just running after signs without growing our faith, without being staying strong, without staying strong in the Lord and the power is might, well, then it's all for naught. But anyway, be looking for that next, uh, uh, that next message here. And uh, until next time, may the peace, grace, and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And good night and God bless you.